So, a fresh new week has arrived, and here on this channel, that means one thing and one thing only. Every weekend, I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, the NBA free agency period opened up, so there has been a ton of player movement already solidified, and we've also seen some of the biggest names in the sport come out requesting trades, which shook the entire NBA community up, so of course, we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from KG, and he says that Damian Lillard waited too long to request a trade, and that it's too late for him, so he'll still retire ringless. So, as he said here, the Damian Lillard saga that has been going on for what seems like years at this point finally got to a point where Dame gave in and requested a trade. After going his entire career insisting that he wanted to stay in Portland forever, and that he had no plans of going anywhere as early as a few weeks ago, he finally caved and admitted defeat, submitting the request this weekend. Have a few of his best years been wasted by waiting this long? Yeah, probably. Ever since they went to the conference finals in 2019, they haven't won a playoff series since, and they missed the playoffs entirely in each of the last two seasons. When the team traded away CJ McCollum over a year ago, that probably should have been the time for him to wrap things up and say his farewell, because that would have been the perfect time for the franchise to shift their focus to the future, but Dame held on insisting that he could turn things around, which proved to be too tall of a task. Lillard now turns 33 years old later this month, entering the tail end of his career, but does all of that mean that it's too late for him to achieve his ultimate goal of winning a title? I don't think so at all. Lillard has apparently made it abundantly clear to the front office that he wants to play for the Miami Heat. The Heat have been in the NBA Finals in two of the last four years, and in the Conference Finals in three of the last four years. They have the best current coach in the NBA, they have two all-star caliber players that excel both offensively and defensively in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, and one of the team's biggest weaknesses has been shot creation in that span, so adding Lillard, who is one of the best shot creators in the entire NBA to that group, would, without question, make the Heat a scary squad. Now, the reason that no trade has actually happened yet is because the Heat don't necessarily have a very good trade package to offer the Trailblazers for Dame. Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry don't really turn any heads as a superstar return, so we will have to wait to see how this situation plays out, but if Lillard does ultimately get his way and lands in Miami, then I believe they immediately become the favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference again with a very good chance at winning the whole thing. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Ryan, and he says that whatever team trades for James Harden will face the same problems that his teams always face, because he has to realize that he has to change his game to be successful in the league again. Like Damian Lillard, James Harden is the other big star who came out and requested a trade this weekend. He opted into the final year of his current contract in hopes of being dealt elsewhere, but unlike Damian Lillard's situation, this trade request came off as much more aloof. Last season, Harden was also a free agent eligible to sign a hefty Supermax contract, but he re-signed for less money to try to help the team. He likely assumed that he would be compensated nicely this offseason by doing so, but after the way that his and the Sixers season ended, I don't think it would have been wise for any team, especially the Sixers, to throw a full Supermax contract his way. James Harden has been dealing with hamstring issues in each of the last two seasons, 
and his blow by speed and first step have been very noticeably affected by that lingering injury. He doesn't create nearly as much space off the dribble as he used to pre-injury, and at his age, there's legitimate reason to doubt if he'll ever get back to what he once was. In the playoffs, he showed that he could still be capable of the occasional brilliance, dropping over 40 points twice against the Celtics, but outside of those two games, he was pretty poor the rest of the series, and in the playoffs as a whole, his finishing around the basket was pretty dreadful, failing to finish layups in traffic or through contact. All of this is leading me to say, as this take states, that Harden is having a difficult time accepting that he's not the player that he once was. He has definitely embraced more of a passing and playmaking role for sure, and that part of his game definitely deserves all of the credit in the world, but his approach to scoring needs to change because he can no longer confidently rely on his ability to separate from defenders off the dribble. Several reports that have come out about the situation have said that he wants to go back to being in full command of an offense, and the difficult truth about that is if he gets traded to another team with stars around him, then he won't be able to do that. The Clippers are the team most heavily linked to acquiring him, and he won't be able to play his pound the air out of the ball play style while being alongside guys like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and even Russell Westbrook, who all need the ball as well, so I do somewhat actually agree with the take at hand here. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Chris, and he says that the Warriors will not be contenders in the Western Conference with Chris Paul now. This was one of the biggest moves of the last week, but with how fast things move in the NBA, it already feels like ancient news. However, now that the Warriors have also successfully re-signed Draymond Green, we have a pretty good idea of what the team is going to look like for next season. This is the kind of take where I don't think the Chris Paul trade altered the way this person viewed the Warriors odds at all, because if you thought the Warriors were contenders before the trade, you probably still do now, and if you didn't think so before the trade, you probably still don't after. The Warriors won it all in 2022, but in 2023, the team as currently constructed got passed up by quite a few others in the West. The Nuggets got healthy and showed that they're the cream of the crop in the conference, the Lakers made some big depth piece moves that resulted in them cruising past the Warriors in the playoffs, and now the Phoenix Suns and Los Angeles Clippers are looking like groups that got aggressive this summer to pass them as well. The Warriors had no choice but to try to make a move that could give them a new dynamic, because they weren't good enough anymore as currently constructed, and I think right now Chris Paul can help the team win more than Jordan Poole can. Paul is not the player he used to be, but he is probably now the best passer on the team, and with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson both liking to move off the ball creating open looks, Paul's passing ability will free them both up for a ton more good looks. Paul is also a much more capable defensive guard than Poole is, and that matters when you're trying to compete at the highest level. I'm not saying that the Warriors are now the best team in the West with Chris Paul, but I do believe they got better after this trade in the short term. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.